gathered together today, there are three of us here, and we hope many of you at home who are able to share with us in this act of worship. Our service commences on page 119 of the prayer book, if you have the prayer book. We also are following our liturgy sheet, which we have distributed through Facebook earlier this week. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Whose mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, to whom whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Life-giving God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the English glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. 
Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, it's quite incredible, this story that we hear today of Mary and Martha, of Lazarus and their friend Jesus. I remember first encountering this story as a teenager, well, at least being conscious of encountering it, and I remember as a teenager thinking to myself, come on Jesus, what are you doing? Why are you hanging around for so long? Why are you waiting? Your mate's in trouble, you've got to go and help him. What are you doing? That, I suppose, was the response of a fairly uh, active and impulsive youth. I needed Jesus to get on with it, to go and to be with his mate, because oftentimes, we have that idea that we need to do everything we can to protect our family and our friends. That reality has become, again, very pressing for us at this time, as we find ourselves in very unusual circumstances, circumstances that most of us have not experienced at any time in our life. And as I've reflected on this passage this week, it's come home to me, that sense of need and urgency to be careful, to protect those that we love and to be with those who we love intentionally. But there's something much deeper going on in this story, in the place of the action that as a teenager I was looking for Jesus to make. Instead, we find contemplation and prayer. As Jesus delayed those few days before going to Bethany, it seems to me that he spent that time in quiet, in prayer, preparing himself. Because there were much larger things at stake for him and for the world at this stake, at this stage than simply the life of a friend. And through the whole thing, Jesus stays plugged in and connected to his Father, very aware of the greater picture, of the greater narrative, of the important things that were taking place. It seems to me that in this space where action was called for, 
contemplation and prayer became the reality. And this week, as I've continued to live life differently, as many of you have lived differently, this has come, be, become true for me. And it's come home quite seriously. We have an opportunity at this time as we live our lives differently, as many of us stay at home, to enter into more times of intentional prayer, to pray for ourselves, to pray for our family and friends, to pray for those who we might not necessarily pray for or would find it difficult to pray for. When Jesus took that time, as he so often did in other stories in the gospel to draw aside and remain connected with his father we see amazing things taking place and just as this example in today's gospel of this raising of lazarus was an opportunity for god's glory to be seen i find myself wondering in these difficult circumstances that we live in at this time in our world in our community where is the grace of God breaking through? I've been deeply encouraged this week by stories of people connecting with each other in new, innovative and exciting ways. And not just connecting, but going even deeper, having conversations with each other, praying with each other. Perhaps this is the way that through our connectedness with God and each other, God's grace is breaking through at this time. May we all know God's grace profoundly and deeply at this time in our lives. The Lord be with you. So let us together affirm our shared faith. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was born, lived, died and rose again and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit who calls, equips and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the Church. Creator, at the beginning of time you breathed life into your creatures. Hear our prayers for your world and its people. We pray for all those whose lives are bound by war, disaster or oppression, for those whose lives are impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, for the hungry, the homeless, for refugees. We pray for the leaders of the world and for all who work for justice and peace. We pray for those leading us in this time of crisis, our Prime Minister, our Premier and our Mayor. We pray for clarity and cohesion among our leaders and for a new spirit of cooperation. Breathe on your children your spirit of hope and possibility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Redeemer, you hold before us the choice of life or death. Hear our prayers for your worldwide church. We pray for places where it's bound by division and discord, lack of resources and fear, for those persecuted for their faith and for those whose faith is weak, for the leaders of churches and for all who minister in your name. We pray particularly for our bishops, Peter, Sonia and Charlie. We also pray for our leaders locally, our clergy and those working in pastoral care at this time. Breathe on your church your spirit of passion and power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our companion, you have shown to your people the way of true love. Hear our prayers for the communities in which we live. We pray for all whose lives are bound by bitterness, jealousy, resentment or mistrust. For those who are victims of intolerance, violence or abuse. For our places of work, our neighbours, our families and our friends. 
We pray also for those who are feeling isolated in this time of closure and distancing. Breathe on your children your spirit of reconciliation and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our comforter, you wept at the death of your friend Lazarus. Hear our prayers for all of those in need and for those who minister to them. We pray for all of those whose lives are bound by despair, misery, confusion or pain, for the lonely, the forgotten and all who mourn, for the sick and all who are close to death. Breathe on your children your spirit of comfort and consolation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our resurrection and life, by your dying and rising you bring new life to others. Hear our prayers for all who have died. We give thanks for all the faithful people of our parishes who have gone before us, for those whose yearly remembrance occurs at this time. Call us forth from the tomb and set us free from all that binds us in death, that with Lazarus and your friends in every age, we may rise to new life with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled and wandered far off. Let us then ask for mercy, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
holiness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet he did not sin. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to walk in the way of his love. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, Proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate that this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God. Have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins. Have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
may we who have shared in this holy meal know your forgiveness in our lives, bring your reconciliation to others, and be a sign of your wholeness in this broken world. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your Spirit. Amen. Just a couple of short notices. There isn't much to say other than the fact that the work of the church continues even though our churches, our church buildings are closed. It's been great to hear stories of people connecting, people supporting each other, people praying for each other. We hope to be able to do a, another live stream of a service late next Sunday and we look forward to you joining with us there. This video will also be posted on the St. Peter's YouTube channel and you can find that by searching in YouTube for St. Peter's East Maitland with the saint abbreviated to ST. It's great to share with all of our brothers and sisters around the area and indeed in different parts around the country. We now pray God's blessing. Christ our Saviour draw you to himself that you may find in him crucified a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sin forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ.